Hi guys, it's Jen with CreativelyHomemade.com. Welcome. This is my last in the series of easy Christmas card ideas. All week long I've been sharing different Christmas ideas with you. And this is my very last one and I think it is my favorite. I just love the shine and shimmer on it. Um, so it features an ornate star die cut cut from gold foil and then all this stamping is embossed so it adds that little special something to the card. So this card was made using the Star of Light stamp set. Super pretty and perfect for embossing. And it was also made with the coordinating Starlight die set. So I really like to send out Christmas cards that reflect the meaning of Christmas. So this is going to be perfect for this year. And I think this is actually the one I'm going to send out to all my family and friends. So let's get started and I will show you how to make it. So for this card, you only need two pieces of cardstock. You need an eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of Whisper White cardstock for your card base. And you want to put that at the top, at the long edge at the top edge of your scoring board and score it four and a quarter inches. Fold that in half and that will be your card base. And then you need a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock that is five and a quarter inches by four inches. Okay, we're going to start with our stamping on the Knight of Navy cardstock layer. I'm using the Star of Light stamp set and I'm going to be using the little swirl and I'm going to be using the Light of Heaven and Became the Light of the World. Now also for this card it would work to use the Star of Wonder, Star of Night, Guide Us to Thy Perfect Light. It's really up to you. Before we do any stamping I want to use my embossing buddy and run lightly all over the cardstock. This puts a little layer of powder down that helps it so that uh, stray embossing powder doesn't stick to it. So I'm going to ink this swirl stamp up with Versamark. Still see a little. I've got embossing powder all over my desk so I think it's just sticking all over the place. So anyway, I'm going to ink that up with the Versamark ink and I'm going to put the little swirl part over in the right corner and have it almost horizontal. And then I'm going to flip that around and ink it up again and put the little swirl in the lower left corner. So it is going to go like that. And before we do any other stamping, I want to get my white embossing powder on those swirls. So I'm just going to pour embossing powder all over that and let it dump right back down into my container and kind of flick it on the back to remove all the excess and if you see an area that didn't really take you can dump more embossing powder on it and also if you see an area where stray powder has gotten on the paper you can take a stiff paintbrush and kind of brush that aside so we're done with the white. Okay, so now we're ready to stamp up the sentiments and I'm going to be using gold embossing powder for that. So I'm using my Versamark to ink up my stamp. And this says the light of heaven and I want to put that one up in the upper left corner. And then use Became the Light of the World. That stamp is going to go in the lower right corner. And then add gold embossing powder to those sentiments. I'm just going to try to make a mess again and do it right over my workspace. So I'm just doing it over my little container of embossing powder here so that I can put that all right back in that container. 
you can find these little spoons at the uh, party supply store. Okay, that looks pretty good. We have our sentiments and our little swirls embossed. So I'm going to pearl out my heat tool and my silicone mat and we're going to emboss that. So I just have an old silicone baking mat that I put down on my workspace. Um, this protects my desk from the heat and I've pulled out my heat tool so it's going to get loud here for a second but I'm just going to run this back and forth over that card until the powder melts and you will see it changes color. So it takes a few seconds to heat up so I'm going to let that run a little bit before I start running it back and forth over my card. You don't want to stay in any one space too long. You don't want to burn your paper. So just run it back and forth. And you should be able to see when that starts to change color. It'll especially be more um, apparent with the gold. Up oh, there it goes. Can you see that? Once it starts to melt, it does not take long for the rest of it to melt completely. The white isn't as readily apparent probably on the video, but you can see it in person. Okay, so that's changed colors. You can see how pretty that looks. So now we're going to make our star cut out in the center. So I'm just going to get my die cut machine out and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my die cut machine pulled out and my starlight die set. I just have these on a magnetic vent cover that I've cut down to fit. Um, you need this star outline and you're also going to need this little ornate star die. So go ahead and use your regular magnetic platform and put the Knight of Navy card base or card layer there and you're going to center that star outline. And once it looks straight to you, go ahead and run that through the die cut machine. And then that is a really cute little cutout there that we're going to put the gold foil star in the middle of. So then you want to switch platforms and you want to use your uh, precision plate. So I pulled out my precision plate and you want a little piece of gold foil paper and then put that ornate star right down in the center of that and I recommend running it through several times. Usually with my um, dies that need this precision plate I run them back and forth three or four times just to ensure all those little pieces get cut out. Oops, it's stuck to the plate. There we go. So pop that out of the foil and I'm going to set my die cut machine. One thing that is really helpful with these ornate dies um, to get the shape to release from the die is this foam platform and die brush. So you just put your die die down on that foam and run this wire brush back and forth over the die. And that helps poke out all these those little centers and it also helps release that shape from your die. So when you turn it over you should be able to pull it up and most of those little pieces are going to fall away. You may have to pop out a few but it won't be anything like if you didn't run that brush over it. So there, whoops, there's a little piece left. There is our finished gold foil die cut. Isn't that gorgeous? 
Okay, so now we have all the prep work done and we are ready to put our cards together. So this is really simple to do. You just want to turn this Knight of Navy piece over and add snail adhesive all over the back. And you want to make sure to add adhesive all around the star cutout shape as well because you want to make sure that that stays stuck down. And then just center that piece on your card base, leaving an even border all the way around, just like that. And then the only other thing we need to do is stick this little gold fold foil die cut down. So the best way to do this, since it's so intricate, is to use a fine tip glue pen. So you want to just add that all over the back of the star die cut. Make sure to get all the little tips of the star because those are the pieces that are going to tend to pop up. So you just want to add a thin little layer of glue all the way around. It takes a little bit of time, but if you do this step, it'll make sure that none of that pops up. Okay, I think I got it all there. Yep, it looks like it. So you just want to add that star die cut to the center of the cutout. And get that all lined up. Now this is going to tend to pop up so what I have found works best is to take your big mounting block and stick it right on top of there and let it sit for a couple of minutes while it dries and sets up. So here is the finished card. So pretty with all the embossing and the ornate gold foil star in the center. I just love how this one turned out. This is a great card to send out to your friends and family to remind them of the true meaning of the season. So if you would like to make these cards, I have links down in the description box below to the stamp set and the coordinating die set that I used, as well as all the other supplies, so you can get them there. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more Christmas crafts coming up. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know that you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy crafting.